Supreme Court strikes down student loan forgiveness. It's official, guys. The Supreme Court just junked President Biden's plan for student loan forgiveness. Now, here's what will happen to your student loans. So number one, the pandemic released pause on monthly payments will be lifted by September 1st. And so this means that it's time to start preparing to resume your payments. But hey, don't stress too much because here's a second bit of news. The Biden administration introduced a year long on ramp to help ease the transition for borrowers who might find it challenging to make their student loan payments. So this on ramp is going to give you some breathing room and ensure that missed payments won't hurt your credit. But here's President Biden talking about it right here. That's why we're creating a temporary 12 month, what we're calling on ramp repayment program. And now, this is not the same as a student loan pause. It's been in effect for the past three years. Monthly payments will be due. Bills will not go out and interest will be accruing. And during this period, if you can pay your monthly bills, you should. But if you cannot, if you miss payments, this on-ramp will temporarily remove the threat of default or having your credit harm, which can hurt borrowers for years to come. Because the Department of Education won't refer borrowers. And the reason why that will work, they won't refer borrowers who miss payments to credit agencies for 12 months to give them a chance to get back up and running. So that gives people at least a little bit of wiggle room. But what they really didn't mention there is that even though you won't go into default or delinquency, if you miss your payments, your loans still going to accrue interest during this period. Now, I think that's the real difference here. So keep that in mind as you guys plan your finances. Now, what do you guys think about this? Like, is this on ramp plan enough to help Americans get back on track with their student loan payments? Hit me up in the comment section down below. Now, we're also going to be covering the education department's plan for a new loan repayment system. Now, it has the potential to slash many borrowers monthly bills by half. Now you'll have the chance to enroll in this program later this summer, even before any payments are due. So keep an eye out for this opportunity. But now you might be wondering about other ways that you can get your student loan debt wiped away. Well, there are plenty of other options available like income driven repayment, public service loan forgiveness, closed or low performing schools, bankruptcy discharge, disability discharge, and debt won't carry on. So definitely we're going to be talking about those as well. Some people, they never believe for one second that the student loan forgiveness would actually go through. And so that's why they paid extra on their student loans throughout the zero interest period and ended up completely paying off their loans earlier this spring. Now, if there's one thing that I know is that you cannot rely on the government pretty much for anything, but to definitely keep their promises about anything. So we're going to take a deep dive into this topic, and we're also going to cover the best ways to move forward from here. All right, guys. Also, for the very best way to invest in gold or silver, check out the links in the description down below of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and dig in. Now, before I get started, I think I just kind of want to bring up the fact that, you know, it was uh, somehow OK for everybody to chip in so that the PPP loans could be forgiven, including for some members of Congress like Marjorie Taylor Greene. But everyone chipping in to help student loans is completely outrageous for some reason. Now I'm going to be honest with you, you know, like I was a responsible person. I never took out student loans. So, you know, I wasn't going to win or benefit from this, but yeah, I, I digress. But maybe you shouldn't start a business if you can't afford it in the first place. There's always that thought process. Wait, isn't that what they're saying about student loans? All right. So now that I've said my piece, here's what will happen to your student loans right now. So Americans with loan balances, they have two things to watch for in the short term. So first, the pandemic related pause on monthly payments will end by September 1st with the first payments due sometime in October. But the Biden administration has said that it will provide a year long on ramp to help ease the transition for borrowers who may struggle with making their payments if a borrower misses a monthly bill. They won't be considered delinquent from October 1st through September 30th, 2024. Then again, there's the Education Department's new loan repayment plan that could cut many borrowers monthly payments by half and enrollment will be possible later this summer before any payments are actually due. Now, apparently they want to use the so-called settlement and compromise authority that it has under the Higher Education Act. Still, it could take months at a minimum, and they're probably going to have a lot of legal or other challenges. Also, there's the Biden administration's repayment plan called SAVE, which would revise the existing income-driven plan known as Repay. The Education Department released its initial proposal in January, and the final rule looks to be pretty close to the original. Payments for undergraduates, borrowers, for example, will amount to about 5% of their discretionary income, which is actually down from 10% in the existing Repay plan and 15% in other plans. Plans. Details are still up in the air on this one. And I definitely recommend hitting the subscribe button and tapping that notification bell. That way you guys don't miss any updates on that one. But let's go ahead and talk about this on-ramp Biden plan. 
Now, basically, missed payments won't hurt your credit, but interest keeps on adding up. It's basically a year-long grace period where borrowers who miss student loan repayments won't be reported to any credit bureaus and they won't go into default. So it's kind of like an unspoken uh, continued extension of this pause because there's basically no penalty except for the interest that's going to accrue. Now, before the pandemic pause, Federal Reserve Research put the average monthly payment at $393 a month. Meanwhile, the median payment was about $222. But how much was your student loan payment? Now, I know some people whose student loan payments are well over $1,000 a month. Heck, some people's rent payments aren't even $1,000 a month. But how much was yours, guys? Seriously. Now, hopefully this on-ramp repayment plan can help. They said that this will run from October 1st, 2023 through September 30th, 2024. Now, during this time, the White House noted that student loan payments will still be due and interest will still accrue on them. But borrowers will not be reported to credit bureaus, be considered in default or referred to collection agencies for late, missed or partial payments during the on-ramp period. And borrowers don't need to do anything to qualify for this on-ramp. Now, if you miss a payment, the on-ramp temporarily removes the threat of defaulting or having your credit harmed. Like I said, it, this is like an extension of the pause, if you ask me. But then again, there's still the larger problem. Basically, how expensive education is getting, right? Universities continuously increasing the price to attend colleges without any kind of oversight. Will it ever change? Probably not. But this is why a lot of people are calling for the entire finance game of for education. Basically, they're calling it a complete greed festival. But what do you guys think? I mean, me personally, I'm a vote with my dollars. I don't need the government to step in and say, you know, hey, you need to regulate this. You need to regulate that. No, I just won't go to that college. If I think it's overpriced, find a cheaper option. Simple as that. Now, in case you guys are curious, though, there are plenty of ways to get your student loan debt wiped away. Now, too many people don't even know that they can actually be eligible for one or more of these different programs. If you know somebody who's struggling with student loan debt, I definitely recommend that you guys send this video to them so that they can review every one of these options that I'm about to share with you. Go ahead and click that share button right now. All right. So first, there's the income driven repayment plan, right? So this catch all mechanism mechanism for repaying debt or having it canceled if you can't repay the full amount after a couple of decades, this has the highest potential for the most people. But I will admit it's pretty confusing. Now, at its most basic, it works the way that it sounds. Your monthly payment depends on your income. So if you can't afford to make a standard payment, then you have to pay less, right? Of course, right? And a formula determines the exact amount. So if you have not repaid your balance after either 20 or 25 years of the income-driven payments, then the government just goes ahead and cancels the remaining debt. Now, for those in the middle of counting to 20 or 25 years, the education department is adjusting the credits that millions of people have earned toward debt cancellation. Now, if you were, say, you know, in forbearance or deferment, you could benefit by having additional months or years count toward the total years of qualifying payments. And if you availed yourself of the pandemic payment pause that is supposed to end this year, those payments you did not make will still count toward your 20 or 25 years. Not bad. All right. So next, there's the public service loan forgiveness, where government government and nonprofit employees have their balance eliminated after 10 years of payments. So it's improved with the recent changes that they made. In fact, hundreds of thousands of teachers and social workers have already become debt free. Now, another one, this is for closed or low performing schools. So they call it the borrower defense. This is allowing people to petition the government if they believe that their school misled them, engaged in misconduct, or straight up just broke a state law relating to the loan or the services that the school was supposed to be providing. In 2022, a lot of students actually borrowed to attend for-profit schools or those who were run by chains like Westwood College, Corinthian Colleges, DeVry University, and ITT Technical Institute. I used to see tons of commercials on, on TV for those uh, schools, many of those schools. Anyway, among others, including schools that shut down altogether and had their debt balances wiped out by default. There is also bankruptcy discharge. Yes, you can discharge your student loan debt by filing for personal bankruptcy. But just to clarify, no, it is not that easy. To wipe your debt away in court, you need to meet a certain legal standard providing that repayment will create an undue hardship. Now, a lot of times this can involve arguing that there is a certainty of hopelessness that you'll ever pay down your debt. Now, a lot would depend on the judicial circuit that you find yourself in and even the judge who hears your case. So next, there is the disability discharge. Now, in the event that you become disabled in a way that is total or permanent, then you could discharge your debt. If the Social Security Administration or the SSA or the Department of Veterans Affairs classifies you as disabled, then this should be sufficient for 
automatic discharge. Mental illness can be a qualifying condition and the Social Security Administration explains how on its website. Otherwise, according to the Education Department, a doctor would need to certify that you were unable to engage in any kind of substantial gainful activity due to a physical or mental impairment that would be expected to result in death had been continuous for at least five years or could be expected to last for at least five years. Now, another question I get a lot is if you're a young adult wondering about the federal plus loans that your relatives took out to pay for your education, then you may be wondering whether the debt dies with the person or will the people who are left behind have to take it on? Well, it does. So the federal government will not make a claim on the estate and you will not inherit the balance. Thank goodness. But let me know if this video was helpful for you guys and let me know if you want more details on this or any of the other student loan forgiveness options. Because hey, we all know getting out of debt is a big part of financial freedom and financial freedom fundamentals, right guys? And I know for a fact that those student loan payments, they can definitely be a little bit tricky for some. So yeah, feel free to drop your questions and your comments in the comment section down below. I'll be sure to read through them on the next one. Just make sure you guys do not miss it. Make sure you guys are subscribed. But for now, this is our student loan forgiveness update, daily news report, the Supreme court ultimately blocking President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, other avenues the Biden administration is planning, the details on the 12-month on-ramp repayment plan, and of course, your options if you're looking to wipe out student debt right now. Now, I hope you guys got all the financial information in this one, guys. You can always watch it again, by the way. Appreciate you guys watching. Big, big thanks for always dropping a like for the videos. Seriously, I appreciate you guys, and I'm gonna catch you on the next one. Y'all be safe.